Good morning. Delighted to see all of you who've come out in person on this rainy morning. And all of the folks who are live streaming with us, welcome to Tabernacle United Methodist for our worship this morning. Uh, I do want to say a word of thanks to my friend and colleague Brad Phillips for the message last week. And I was able to watch some of that. Good job, Brad. Thank you. Folks, just some things that you might be interested in. Our spotlight didn't get released this week, but there are wonderful ministries that I think you may want to know about. And so today, after the service, we're going to gather some of us here in this space and we're going to pack 150 lunches that will go to Micah. So anybody who wants to stay and help the mission group leading in that, um, whether you stay and help pack those 50, 150 lunches or not, as you exit, you'll be exiting through these doors and you'll see our kids who are hosting a lemonade stand. And so I'm sure you'll be ready to pucker up and get some lemonade and have that on the way out. That's by donation. And so the kids, as they're raising that money, will be donating all of what they raise for shoes for the school kids preparation coming up this fall. So those are some opportunities that are happening today when worship ends. We also have an opportunity as we continue to support Micah and that we're doing some food prep on Friday. And I think the uh, primary protein is chicken. Is that right? Is it fried chicken? Yes. All right. So if you'll look out for that. Then we also want you to know that our youth car wash dates are coming up. So let the rain sprinkle your car today and early this week. And then the next two Saturdays, the 22nd and the 29th, we'll be ready on those Saturdays from 9 to noon to give you a good car wash by donation. So come out, bring your neighbors, tell your friends so that we can enjoy and have our youth doing some of their fundraising to support some of the ministries that the kids do. Next Sunday, very special thing next Sunday, um, our music ministry has pulled together a youth instrumental ensemble. So next Sunday at the 815 service and here at this service as we begin, we'll begin with the blessing of having a youth instrumental ensemble that will come and play. We want you to be aware of some of those. And then when the service is over today, amongst the other things, opportunities, we have our refreshment table set up for some fellowship time, which will give you the opportunity to be absolutely sure you have greeted someone whose name or face may not be familiar to you. Um, and you will know who those people are because her name and face isn't familiar to you. <laughs> so we encourage you to just enjoy some time in fellowship. We're blessed with our praise band who's going to be leading us in some music, a great IT team, and blessed with Rhonda Kappas, who is our lay worship person today and leading us in worship. So folks, let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship, and I'm going to turn it over to Rhonda. All right, before we do our call to worship, we have one announcement that I was asked to read. So it says, each month we try to highlight a ministry partnership that TUM supports. This month's special partnership is YWAM and Alexis Worthen, our own TUM young adult missionary in Thailand. YWAM is the acronym for Young Youth with a Mission. It's a global movement of Christians from many cultures, age groups, and Christian traditions dedicated to serving Jesus throughout the world. Tabernacle is blessed to have the sp and sponsor Alexis Worthen, who grew up in our church and received a call from God to spread God's message. TUM has been able to sponsor Alexis for the last 10 years. More information about YWAM and Alexis are available on our church's website. Second mile donations to YWAM can also be given on the TUM web page. All right, now if you'll stand and join me for our call to worship. 
Praise to the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty deeds. Praise him according to his surpassing greatness. Praise the Lord. Praise him with trumpet sound. Praise him with lute and harp. Praise him with tambourine and dance. Praise him with strings and pipe. Praise the Lord. Praise him with clanging cymbals. Praise him with loud clashing cymbals. Let everything that breathes praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. And our are making their way now to Miss Judy. So they'll have the Kids for Christ time together and that fellowship. While the kids are making their way, we're going to do some singing. Well, would you be free from the burden of sin? There's power in the blood. All right, so as we come to our time of prayer, I just wanted to preface it with this. As the children ministry leader here, we are having an amazing summer. So just think about that as we start this prayer. We've had VBS, always amazing. We have had a trip to the Fred Nats Stadium. The Nats actually won that game, and, right? <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> and uh, we just yesterday had a splash party where the kids were having lots of fun, um, it was supposed to be them getting wet, but I think Pastor Ted and Kent and I as well got wet. <laughs> so uh, just keep all these wonderful things in mind as we go to the Lord in prayer today. Dear God, let us revel in summer. Let us soak up the long days in the warm sun. May our feet walk on sandy beaches and hike in mountain pathways, and our heads rest on thick grass under blue skies. May we listen to and marvel at the singing of birds and stop to watch the blissful children at play. This summer, God, may our breathing slow and our hearts open. God, help us to be present to all that is so that we might best see all that might be. Thank you, God, for this glorious season. Just thank you so much for the many blessings you pour down on us and the ways we can witness your creation. We just thank you. Thank you for being an awesome and mighty God. Father, we have people and situations on our hearts, and we're going to lift them up to you now. Just call them out by name or call them out in your heart.
Father, every single person that's been mentioned, that's been lifted up in word or in heart, Father, you knit them together. They are your children. You know each one of their needs, each one of their their thoughts, their situations, and we're placing them in your hands knowing that you are full of wisdom and guidance and mercy and healing. And we ask, Father, that your will be done in all of their lives. Father, thank you for this glorious way that we can communicate with you called prayer. And we thank you so much for Jesus who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Through it all, the Lord is with us. There's a whisper in the chaos. There's a shelter in this storm. There's an anchor for my resting heart. And it's found in you. Thank you, Praise Band. Wonderful song, through it all. And so as we continue our worship, we have the scripture from Exodus 
It is chapter uh, 1, and it's verses 8 through 14. Let's see, wait a second. It's Exodus chapter 16. Exodus chapter 16, and it's verses 1 through 8. So disregard whatever that other listing. Oh, it's correct there. It's not correct. It's not correct in my bulletin. But the words are correct that say the whole congregation of the Israelites set out from Elam and came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai. On the 15th day of the second month, after they departed from the land of Egypt, the whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the land of by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the pots of meat and ate our fill of bread, for you have brought us out into the wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I'm going to rain bread from heaven for you. And each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way, I will test them whether they will follow my instruction or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, In the evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaining against the Lord. For what are we that you complain against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening, and your fill of bread in the morning... Because the Lord has heard the complaining that you utter against him. What are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. This is the word of God, and thanks be to God for this word. And so, friends, if there was ever anything that was human universal, if there was ever anything that you'd find in all cultures, You'd find it in every society. It would be the human thing of complaining and grumbling. It's just what we do. Now, I want to make a distinction between things that are grumbling and complaining and things that are actually legitimate, helpful feedback and legitimate sharing of information and things that are designed to build up the kingdom, to help the community, to make us all stronger. There is a distinction. So I want you to hear that I'm not just saying, stop grumbling and complaining. (laughs) I am saying that in part. (laughs) But I'm also saying that when your comments and when your feedback and when your conversations really are designed to be helpful and they turn out to be helpful, That's a wonderful thing. Now, this thing of grumbling and complaining, it happens, it happens in uh, pretty much every sector we go. And the truth is, it also happens sometimes in the church. That's where you say, Jesus, help us. (laughs) Because if you've been a part of any church, especially if you've been on any church committee that involves food, what's the grumble that we'll hear? That church kitchen. Why don't those people clean up what they put in the refrigerators instead of leaving it to grow? (laughs) Right? So you you sometimes will hear some of that grumbling. Now, it's intended to be helpful, but the grumbling part sounds more like complaining and other stuff than it does. See, here's the thing, and here's the way I see some of this. It's great when things start off from a good place. But if we don't let it stay at a good place, it can become really more of a challenge and it can become divisive. You see, it's a good thing starting off at a place where a church has the facilities to have a kitchen 
and especially like Tabernacle, to have a kitchen with multiple refrigerators. Now, my hope is that people don't look at the multiple refrigerators at Tabernacle and say, we got stuff nasty growing in all three. (laughs) But that folks say, they provide for us to do good ministries. But it's not just the church kitchen, friends, honestly, that can sometimes become the source of grumbling. I have to tell you, honestly, about a church that, and thankfully it wasn't a church I was serving, but it became such a conflict. The good thing that started out is that the church was renovating. They were renovating and they were adding on and they were doing some wonderful new things in the sanctuary. But unfortunately... At one point, when it became time to select the color of the carpet. Yeah, if you're streaming, you may not hear the people saying, oh, that's a groan. I have never seen something so wonderful as redesigning and as renovating become such a crazy blowout of conflict. The color of the carpet. Now, I'm glad I was not the pastor there, because if I were, I'd have to confess and say, I'm sorry, I could care less what color the carpet is. (laughs) I can't get worked up about that. But it became a conflict. And it became such a destructive, dividing conflict that there seemed to be people people who were so invested in whether the color was red or whether the color was green or whether it appropriately matched the colors of the wall now friends that's going way too deep for me (laughs) universal though the grumbling get this though apparently grumbling is such a universal thing and it is such a human dynamic that people have actually spent money on studies and those studies have identified complainer personality types yeah complainer personality types and the studies have identified five different complainer personality types now I want to tell all the people who are here and all the people streaming that tabernacle doesn't have any of these five types (laughs) okay (laughs) yeah some of you are skeptical that I say that here's the first complainer personality type It's called the meek complainers, the meek complainers. And these are complainers who don't like conflict. So they will complain, but they will not complain to anyone who has any ability to make a difference about their complaints. So they'll sort of do it in a passive way, off to the side. They don't want anybody to really know that they're complaining. So they're kind of shy about it. The opposite of the meek complainer personality type, the aggressive complainer personality type. This is a personality type identified as one who complains loudly so everyone will hear their complaint. Now, if you're not familiar with this, all you have to do is pull up any social media in about 30 seconds, you'll start seeing the aggressive complainer type who wants everyone to hear their complaint. Then there's the, what's called the high roller complainer personality, the high roller. This is identified as a person who wants you to know that they're complaining, and then uh, they're going to do what they can um, to see if everyone will fix their complaint. Now, here's the problem. They won't complain to customer service. They'll buy a product. They'll be unhappy with it. They'll tell their friends they're unhappy with it. But they will not tell customer service, the place from which they bought the product, that they're unhappy. Number four is identified and called the rip-off, the rip-off complainer personality type. And it says that these are people who really complain and they want to complain in a lot of different ways, but they do not truly want their complaint or issue resolved. They'd really rather just be able to complain. So they don't want resolution. They don't want anything fixed. But they do want you to hear them complaining. 
Last but not least is the chronic complainer personality. The chronic, and you know where this one's going in this description. The chronic complainer personality type is the person who is never satisfied with anything. Everything is wrong. Everything is bad. Everything is a problem. And it's always the case such that every time you have a conversation with the chronic complainer, that's what's worked into the conversation. I think about the people, uh, the Hebrew people and the Exodus thing, and I suspect that if these five personality types are right, you probably had some of those among the Hebrew people. Some of the interesting things, though, that happen are that these folks have been delivered from captivity taken out of slavery. In fact, some of the scholars say that the Hebrew people who escaped captivity actually escaped and had enough provisions for quite some time to start them off on the journey. That the Hebrew people who have then received freedom and been out of captivity were on this journey and they were headed to the place that God had promised them. We may not remember every detail about the Exodus story, but some of the things we remember and know cause us to look more closely at what was happening in this Exodus part of the story. Cause us to say, these people were complaining and actually saying it would have been better had we stayed in Egypt because at least then we could have had food, meat, and drink. Folks, yes, hunger will cause us to complain. Hunger will cause us to complain pretty much any time it just hits us hard. I mean, for U.S. citizens, the most part, we're blessed, and we're actually able to have a meal, what, every four hours or so? Most of us, every four or five hours. And we're blessed because when we've had our regular meal, whether it's we skip breakfast and have lunch and dinner or whatever it is, most of us are also blessed because we can have in-between meal snacks. <laughs> but the Israelites, the complaining and the groaning and the moaning, I find this fascinating about the Israelites and their complaints. God didn't turn into anger about their complaining. God actually didn't seek to take vengeance upon them for the complaining. God didn't challenge who they thought they were in the complaining. I'm really amazed at the graciousness, the goodness and just the overflowing compassion of God. When these people were complaining, they were complaining having been on a journey to a place where God had promised them and to a fulfillment of God's plan for them. They're complaining, and in the midst of complaining, God said, I hear you. I hear you. And so, I will give you twice the portion you need. That was God's answer. It also strikes me that sometimes I think if there's something universal, it's also uh, sometimes a universal thing to sort of blame God for things that may be a result of our actions and choices. Sometimes that happens. We choose to do something. I, I want you to hear this. This week we had our mission week with the youth, and we were studying God and creation and we talked about this whole matter of leaving the Garden of Eden and what the youth said was, okay, there were choices made and there had to be natural consequences. Not because God did something to those people, but because people did something that brought about a consequence. And even then, God was gracious. This is something our youth pointed out from a study, a Bible study, of Genesis 1 and Genesis chapter 2. That God's amazing response 
is to hear us. Here is why I want to really say to us all and remind us all. God never says, don't talk to me. God doesn't say that. God doesn't do that. God never says, your complaint is too small. God never says, I don't care about your situation. God says, God wants to hear. Here's the way God did this in Exodus. God really said, I'll walk beside you and I'll be with you. I want to hear what you have to say and I will respond. Friends, you know, that's important because sometimes we really are at a bad place. Sometimes we are at a place of suffering. Sometimes we are at a place of hardship. And it doesn't matter how we got there. Let's be honest. When we're at a place of hardship or suffering or difficulty, we're not sitting around analyzing how we got there. What we want is relief. And what we have and what we pray for and what we give thanks for and why we praise God is we have a God who says, okay, I hear you. I understand. And I hear you. In the reality and the presence of a Jesus Christ who says you'll not be alone I'm with you and so I hear you it's not to say friends keep the grumbling going <laughs> that's not what I'm saying what I am saying is Exodus is really showing us that when God leads us to a place and when God guides and directs us, that's when blessings flow. The Hebrew people and their crumbling and complaining created a dynamic that was very troubling, and this is it. They created a situation where they were demonstrating that they did not trust God, that they no longer trusted God. They no longer trusted the plan they no longer trusted that God had a very significant purpose for their lives. That's part of the Exodus story. God had a purpose for their lives and a plan for their lives. And here's the reality for 2023. God has a purpose and a plan for our lives, even if we're not paying attention to it, even if we're not cognizant of it, even if we haven't really thought it through or felt spiritually connected to it, God has a purpose. Folks, I don't care what age you are, for every day that God gives you life, God is with you and guiding you in a purpose and a direction. And that purpose and direction, thanks be to God, is also for kingdom building, for community building in Christ, for, for, for building relationships with us that grow closer and closer and closer. Preachers don't tell you to keep studying the Bible just because we think it's a good hoop to jump through. <laughs> That's not why we say study our Bible. We say study the Bible and we have Bible study classes because we believe that it'll help us to have a closer walk with Jesus, to have a stronger relationship with Christ, to have a better understanding of God. And whatever God is doing in the purpose and plan for our lives and whatever God is doing in the direction where God is leading us, if Exodus teaches us nothing else, it teaches us God will provide along the way. Along the way, we may not always have exactly what we want when we want it. But God will provide what we need along the way. And the, the God who said through Aaron and Moses, all right, I hear the people grumbling. And my response, I'm going to provide twice the amount of what they need. In providing twice the amount of what they need, let's see if it'll help them get back to obedience to where I'm leading them. 
Let's see if it'll help them get back to the plan and the purpose I have for them. Let's see if it'll help them to, to make this journey to the Holy Land and to the promised place. Because God's also watching for that. You heard me say on the first Sunday in this month, God is watching. God's not just watching. God's paying attention. And God is listening to us. And God is providing for our needs. And the, the Son of God, Jesus Christ, is ready to walk more closely with us. And the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is ready to help us transition from one of these five grumbling personality types <laughs> to a place where our conversations are designed for us to become spiritually more mature and stronger individuals in Christ and to become the people God would have us to become. Okay, you don't know who it is God wants you to become and what it is God wants you to become? You don't know? You're not sure? Some prayer will help with that. And I guarantee you some Bible study will help with that. And I guarantee you that within the faith community, if you gather yourself with others, especially others, who are determined to walk in the path God has laid before them, you'll figure out and you'll have the resources to know where God is leading you. And those same folks will actually remind you you're not doing this alone. You're never doing this alone. God is with us, leading and guiding and if we stop along the way to grumble or complain, to make a fuss, to think more about what we think we're entitled to and what we deserve, God's not going to punish us for that. God's actually going to listen with a great deal of patience. And God's going to be with us on that journey Here's what it says in the 1929 Common Book of Prayer. God is more ready to hear than we are to pray. God is more ready to hear than we are to pray. And so the encouragement and the invitation for the homework this week, tell God the prayers on your heart and your mind. Let me say that a different way. When you catch yourself getting ready to grumble or complain, the invitation is to transition that to telling God what's on your heart and what's in your mind. And in that way, we move closer to Christ. Praise Ben is coming, and they're going to lead us and guide us as we're transitioning out. Um, I'm going to invite you to stand as you're able. And... Wendy, you're going to start that song for us that I mentioned earlier.
And so, friends, uh, sound booth, if you'll put that refrain back on. Come to the altar. Give us that refrain. Folks, you've heard the song. I think you know the song. And you know the tune. But I want us to sing that together a cappella as our closing. And Wendy's going to give us those first notes. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was brought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Once more, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Go into the world, my friends, and carry with you the love and grace of Jesus Christ. Go in his name and go in peace. Amen.